Hey guys, this is I for Trans Youth. Um, yeah. So, this week's topic. Um, how to cope with dysphoria when transition is not an option. Um, like, for example, someone who's under the age of 18 without parental consent. Or those who don't have financial backing to transition. Um, so how do you deal with that, basically? Um, well, you know... I, I haven't answered this yet because I'm really having a hard time thinking about it. Like, I know what I would do in my own situation, but... But, um, I'm not everyone, so... Like, uh, I would basically say just do what you can to at least keep yourself happy. I don't know. Say, so say your situation is that you can't afford to transition. To say you can't afford to take your hormones or whatever. Because they're expensive. I don't know. Um, then be a, be a pre-hormonal trans woman, I guess. Just, obviously you won't be as happy. Um... But, you know, you can do as much as you can, at least. Like, like you can um, still wear what you want, still just be a girl. Just, you know, just, um, and try to make more money, obviously. I mean, that's not really the boat I'm in. I mean, I, I make money. I have two jobs. So, I can afford my hormones. Um, obviously, you guys know after watching a bajillion of my videos that I'm working two jobs and I'm trying to save as much money as possible so I can go to Thailand and have my SRS. Um, so I guess that's, I'm, I'm kind of a good example for that actually, because, um, you know, I'm, I'm here working as much as I possibly can, like, all the time. I'm never not working. So that I can go to Thailand and have my vagina surgery. That's what it's all for. And it'll probably be like another year before I can afford it. So, you know, you gotta really want it, of course. I mean, I cannot picture living the rest of my life with male genitalia, so... Yeah. And I have absolutely no problem working the next year of my life non-stop to be able to afford a vagina. I have absolutely no problem with that. So you need to, you have to really want it, of course. And I guess that's where you find it if you do really want it or not, is if you're in a situation like that. You know, though, at least you're not some, some punk-ass rich kid who gets everything just by asking mommy and daddy. Um, because I've met a few of those people and I fucking hate the, their guts. Because uh, they think they're better than everyone. Really, they do. Like... You should be... Eh, I don't know. I can't even make fun of them. <laughs> but... I don't know. Off topic, though. Um, okay. Say your situation is... You're... You're under 18, and you don't have parental consent. Um... Okay, I'll be entirely honest with you. What I think I would, I might do in that situation is leave their house. Um, that's assuming though that I um, didn't have really a relationship with my parents, and I would think that if they were the kind of people that wouldn't be okay with me, then I probably wouldn't, um, because I know the kind of person I am. But luckily, I have the best parents in the world. I love my mom very much, and I love my dad very much. Um, and they're very cool with me, and they're very supportive. But if they weren't, I think, like, um, you know, if someone is a hater, then they're a hater. Doesn't matter if it's, like, a family member or not, I mean... Just because you have a... You share blood with someone doesn't mean you're, um... Necessarily stuck with them, I guess. Is how I can say it. Um... Like, I know. And I know a lot of people who... Haven't spoken to their biological parents in years. And don't intend to. 
Um, you know, so... Your family is the people who love you and care for you. And who support you. And that doesn't always mean relatives. Um, so, I mean, and, and, and obviously, again, that would involve employment because leaving your parents home, I would, you would, uh, need money to do that. You'd probably have to get your own apartment unless you have a really good friend who would let you crash with them or something, which I never did. Not that I needed to again, but still. Um... It's the same thing, though. Just do what you can to... It's a hard question to answer, this entire question here, because every single circumstance is different. Like, there are no two stories where trans women have unaccepting parents that are exactly the same. Maybe one has unaccepting parents because they are extremely religious and their religion is anti-trans people. I don't know. And maybe another person has a similar story, but their parents are anti-trans for some other reason. Maybe because daddy dated a trans girl once and she was a bitch. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. So there are a million different reasons, though. And those tiny little details in everybody's situation makes it a whole different circumstance that would need to be dealt with in, like, a different way. So, and again, like, say you have the greatest friend ever who would, without it, without question, let you sleep on your couch as, as long as you need to, on their couch, as long as you need to. And say you don't, and you have to go out and find a job, find a place, pay rent, la-di-da. You know, some things make it easier, some things make it harder, but, you know, you need to figure out a plan for basically how to get where you want to go. And that's not just for trans people with transphobic parents. It's, uh, that actually goes to everyone, everywhere, ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess that's my answer to that. So, this is Zara for Trans Youth, and if you guys, you know, you guys know the drill. If you have a question, transyouthchannel at gmail.com, and we, if we think it's, it's a good question to answer, then we'll get to it. Uh, yeah, so this is Zara for Trans Youth. Comment, subscribe, again.